Acclaimed writer of numerous best-selling novels, poet and essayist, business and medical school graduate, consultant, Feng Tan, if you could define yourself using one word, what would it be? Audacious. I think uh, I, uh, even though I, I look quite quiet, however, uh, internally uh, I'm audacious to try new things. I'm audacious to write uh, taboos, uh, to, uh, in writing to try new technology, uh, new method, new way of looking at things, uh, new way of expressing things. So I guess uh, one thing to describe my attitude is audacious. Bridge. Dreamer. Dedicated. Experienced. Curious. Hopeful. Meticulous. Born in Beijing, Fang Tong wrote his first book when he was just 18 years old. His first three novels were semi-biographical and all about growth, youth, and going through puberty. He became well-known and had his works compared to some literary masterpieces of the West. So, as a Beijing-born writer, tell me about growing up in Beijing and how things have changed there in terms of its atmosphere and its literature. The opening up of China uh, does take a huge in, uh, impact uh, for all the major aspects of Beijing. Uh, for example, uh, the streets uh, get larger, bigger, wider, uh, and you have more cars, uh, it's got more polluted. Uh, the pace of life uh, is much faster than before. Uh, However, there are also things hasn't changed much. For example, it's still uh, a center of cultural uh, events. Uh, you have a lot of singers, actors, uh, writers, poem, poets uh, gather around. Uh, you also uh, have people very interested in uh, creative writing, uh, in, uh, uh, in performing arts. Uh, in, uh, uh, in media and in politics. So uh, I, 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 I do feel the changes uh, are uh, just since become faster, uh, it's become a more crowded city, uh, but fundamentals are still the same. And going back to the first few novels that you wrote, yeah. they're semi-biographical and they're all about that, growing up and yeah. going through puberty. Yeah. How was that period of time in your life, if you could summarize in a few words? The, the first uh, objective coming to my mind is fast. <laughs> Everything changed so fast. You know, so it's, that's three novel talking about uh, from uh, 1985 to 2000, altogether 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, each novel talk about roughly about five years of growth. Uh, during that 15 years, uh, uh, a young man grow from uh, uh, 15 to 30 uh, year of uh, age. Uh, and uh, physically, uh, things change very fast. It's, uh, you know, it's just when, when a boy of 15, he only as high as uh, 1.5, then they become 1.8 uh, meter high. Uh, and also mentally. You know, uh, uh, at the very, every, very beginning uh, uh, of the novel, uh, you don't. You only have emotion, some uh, unrealistic and unreal dreams. Uh, dream cannot be realized. Then uh, you start to uh, have relationship. You start to uh, have your career. Uh, you start to have uh, uh, financial pressure. Then all this uh, uh, mentally also change. Things also change very fast. Uh, externally, uh, you know, Beijing as the capital of China uh, is uh, uh, is opening up dramatically. Uh, then within the 15 years, I guess the the city the city almost uh, double, if not triple, itself. Uh, and you see different people coming in, go goes out, then uh, then not that that is just the same is how people feel, how young people feel in this such dramatic change 
uh, both internally and externally. One of the books that you wrote during that time, yeah. Everything Grows, has been compared to the American classic, The Catcher in the Rye. Right. Right, yes. Have you yeah. ever read that book? And what do you think of that comparison? Uh, I read Catcher in the Rye uh, two times. Mm -hmm. I like that book a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's, I think the similarity between uh, Everything Grows and Catcher in the Rye, uh, the biggest similarity is the atmosphere. The atmosphere. It's saying, uh, you know, you, uh, in the Catcher of Rye, I don't know whether you read it, uh, you also do not have a very dramatic story. You don't. Uh, it, however, you, you read it uh, with great interest. Uh, vividly uh, things going on, uh, there's an atmosphere which is very uh, attractive, of absorbing. Uh, the same thing happened to Everything Grows. Mm -hmm. uh, people saying, uh, you don't have a story, uh, I said, uh, uh, I replied, uh, fine, if, uh, as long as you can, you can finish the book uh, with, uh, without, bo uh, without, uh, without uh, boredom, uh, then you don't need a story. So also, I, I think I learned uh, quite a bit from Henry Miller. Yeah. The Tropic of Cancer, uh, Tropic of Capro, uh, Capricorn. Mm -hmm. uh, he also doesn't have a lot of story, uh, dramatic story <laughs> in his novels, right? So I guess uh, uh, that's the similarity. It's driven, the, the whole book is driven by, by atmosphere uh, other than a story. That brings me to my next question. What are some of your favorite American authors and okay. anyone yeah. who has yes. really influenced you? Yes, American uh, author, I like uh, that bunch of authors uh, during uh, 19, uh, 1930, 1940, 1950. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Henry Miller, Kurt Vonnegut, uh, Faith Ralph, uh, say uh, Jack uh, Koryak, uh, uh, Sidinger, of course. Uh, then that's the bunch of others I like. After becoming a doctor and dealing with cancer patients, Feng Tong decided to abruptly change his career when he came to the U.S. to get his master's degree in business. Here, he learned lessons in behavior and conduct that he brought back to China, and he now shares with the world through his writing, a resort that assists his own emotions. You know, I, I was trained as a gynecologist, mm -hmm. uh, oncologist specialized in ovarian cancer. It's a very deadly uh, cancer for women. Uh, when, it's discover, when people discover they have that this uh, disease, uh, it's almost at late phase. Uh, so no matter uh, what medicine, what uh, surgery, what radiation therapy, chemical therapy you do, uh, 50% of people die, uh, women die in five years. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's pretty, feel, you feel pretty helpless. You feel like a loser. So uh, I guess uh, that is the main reason I think about changing career. Mm -hmm. Then I went to, uh, uh, went to Emory for MBA education. You know, then I uh, joined my Kinsan company as a consultant. Being a consultant, a good thing, is you can tell your client, say, shut up the company, you know, close the company, open a new one, sell mm -hmm. it to someone. But as a doctor, you cannot tell the lady, say, hey, get another life. Your <laughs> <laughs> disease cannot be cured. That, that's pretty sad. And how would you say that experience abroad here in the U.S. changed you as a person or changed your work? I think in the U.S., we, uh, 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 the society, the, the school, uh, did uh, let me know that uh, management uh, it is, uh, uh, is a sense. Uh, so you can increase efficiency, you can increase uh, uh, the throughput by uh, managing well. So that's a fundamental belief uh, the, the two years of U.S. Uh, business education gives me. Uh, also, uh, this society teach me uh, you can keep things simple, you can be direct, you can be frank, you can be uh, uh, full of positive energy. After living in Hong Kong, you are now back in Beijing working there. Yes. What are some good 
and bad aspects of it. The good thing, number one, uh, is an international city. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a lot of uh, different uh, type of food. The food is terrific in Hong Kong. I guess it's one of the best city in terms of food. <laughs> yes. Second, uh, it's very convenient. The city is extremely packed. Uh, so you almost can go 80% of things, uh, places you want to go by walking. Oh. So it's, uh, 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 it's very efficient if you want to meet. Uh, you can even make three appointments uh, for within two hours and you won't miss any of them in, wow. in three places. You can just by walking, you can just be there. And uh, because all their buildings are sort of linked uh, by the corridor mm -hmm. uh, with shelter, then you don't need an umbrella uh, during the rainy season. So that's uh, quite convenient. Uh, thirdly, uh, you have reasonably free environment. You have uh, Google, you have different information from different side of the world, uh, you talk to different bunch of people, then give you a broader perspective of what's going on. Uh, those three things uh, Beijing doesn't have. Uh, however, Beijing uh, do have, number one, uh, the cultural uh, richness, uh, mm -hmm. which Hong Kong doesn't. Uh, second, uh, it's, uh, it's my hometown. Uh, if you feel uh, familiar, uh, then you have more friends, uh, family, friends, all that. So that's, that's the reason I love Beijing. Yeah. yeah. And you said that you write in Chinese because of its beauty. Yeah. Tell me about writing in Chinese in comparison to other languages. The Chinese language you have, you know, it's uh, hard to describe. You feel like uh, you are cooking or you are playing piano, you feel the touch cooking, you feel the meat, you feel the fish. It's like uh, I uh, make an analogy. Uh, uh, except for the first novel, uh, I always, uh, except for the first novel, I always write uh, uh, in a notebook. Then uh, I always try to uh, use uh, the notebook with the best touch of keyboard. Then uh, when you hit the keyboard, uh, I, I feel like the playing the piano. <laughs> then the words, uh, the Chinese words, jumping into the screen while I, I'm, I'm typing. Uh, then you feel like uh, small fish, small flowers, uh, small shrimps are jumping around on the screen. So it's uh, quite a uh, rewarding experience for me. And you have said that writing has helped you go through a midlife crisis kind of thing. Yes. How? Why would you say that you even had to deal with that? Because you, you were such a successful scholar in the past and now a professional. Yeah. Why would you say that issues even came up? Being successful in the earth, uh, earthly definition uh, doesn't help you uh, uh, stay away from a uh, middle age crisis. Mm -hmm. Maybe even speeding it up. <laughs> so uh, by writing, uh, you know, when, when you, when you, when you, when you uh, live day by day in a very, business, uh, in, in a very busy uh, uh, schedule, busy style, uh, since uh, uh, days pass too fast, things uh, go on too fast, then uh, you, don't have the, you don't have time to really digest what's going on. You only make business decisions, doing work, all that. Then uh, while I'm doing the writing, uh, it's my time to pause, to think, to digest my previous life. Uh, in this way, uh, as a trained problem solver, uh, I define the problem. Uh, I look into the problem, what's going on. Uh, then, if possible, I try to give certain uh, solutions. In this way, uh, I understand what's going on in my life. With his latest book labeled Pure Pornography, banned in mainland China and published only in Hong Kong, Feng Tong chooses to simply treat sex as a casual and natural act 
without ever self-censoring. We can expect a few of his books to be translated into English in the near future, while his newest book will come out next July in China. Your latest book, One Is, is said to be pure pornography. How was the process of writing that and what was your inspiration behind it? Sex as a whole uh, is, uh, is of huge interest uh, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I, uh, being a gynecologist, I was trained to understand what's going on on the lady's side. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, uh, I think, uh, in the literature science, uh, pornography can help uh, people. Uh, you know, for them to understand, for them to uh, reduce their pressure, reduce their uh, 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 their burden of their heart. Uh, I just want to uh, number one. I want to uh, have a beautiful book, a beautiful uh, pornography book that treat sex uh, as normal as drinking eating, uh, having a baby, uh, having a swim. Uh, in, uh, in my philosophy, it should uh, become, it, you know, sex can be a healthy, uh, natural thing, uh, which is sort of uh, not so normal concept in, uh, among Chinese. Second, uh, since I'm very interested in uh, sexuality as a whole, uh, I know I need to uh, finish uh, the one is uh, as a as a gift uh, for my uh, 14th birthday. You know, this people in you know, the hormone level it goes up and goes down uh, after after 40, according to some articles, mm -hmm. uh, your hormone level just uh, drop, uh, not dramatically, <laughs> but step, uh, but uh, steadily dropping. So I guess. Uh, I need to uh, finish the book while the hormone uh, level is still high. Writing a book like that, either in the east or the west side of the world, it attracts a lot of popularity from people, from the public in general. Yeah. Fifth Shades of Grey, for instance, yeah. here, yeah. you know. Yeah. Did you write that intentionally to get more popularity? I think that could be the second consideration. Mm -hmm. The first consideration is always uh, what is uh, most burning for me to write. Uh, this, is, this topic is burning for me to write before I turn 40. Second, uh, you're right. I, I think uh, writing uh, uh, a good uh, pornography can attract uh, people's attention. Uh, then, uh, however, you know, if you consider uh, financial uh, benefits, uh, writing a pornography uh, is not that yeah. uh, that uh, that uh, financial uh, financially good. Uh, for ex uh, the reason is very simple. I cannot publish in mainland. That True. book cannot cannot be published in mainland. Uh, can only be published in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. In Hong Kong, the book sell uh, one hundred thousand already. Oh wow! Uh, it is already a miracle. Uh, my publisher told me uh, since Hong Kong become a city, mm -hmm. uh, that book, the one is, uh, is the best setting so far. Uh, it's wow. a he, uh, it's uh, break the his, uh, historical record. Uh, however, it's still only 100,000. So uh, right now, if, uh, if my novel uh, published in mainland, normally I, uh, I, I, normally I sell uh, more than half a million copies. Wow. So that's, uh, that's huge difference. Uh, that's <laughs> that's huge. a big deal anyways, yes. though, just to have that many books sold in Hong yeah. Kong. Did you know that the book was going to get censored in China, in mainland China? And how did it feel? Uh, I, I, I know it's going to be difficult to publish. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it has religion, yeah. uh, has uh, porno in it. Uh, but I, I, again, I, I think it's still pure literature because it's not right to, uh, the main purpose is not to arouse people, is try to solve people's uh, issue, problems uh, come from uh, all these sexual conflicts. Uh, I know it's going to be difficult to publish, but it's more exciting for me to write a pure 
uh, beautiful uh, natural pornography. Uh, you know, the, the, when they banned it with the banned book with a mm -hmm. cover uh, saying if you're under uh, 18, oh, yeah. you shouldn't read. Uh, uh, feel excited. Uh, I feel excited. <laughs> I feel proud of myself. Absolutely. And you say that you don't self-censor. You leave that up to your editors, That's right? right? That's right. How is it having a creative career in writing and having to deal with a reality of censorship? Uh, as you described, uh, my way is, number one, I understand uh, the editors have to cut things yeah. because of the system. Number two, uh, I make it absolutely uh, a taboo for myself to do censorship on my own book. The reason is, if you start to have the habit, then uh, you cannot run away from that. You cannot make the best out of yourself. Uh, my purpose is not uh, uh, having a second rate book, is I want to have the best. Uh, so if you combine these two points, my practice uh, is uh, very practical. Uh, step one, uh, I write as freely as possible, uh, as audaciously as possible. Uh, I keep 100% true to myself. Step two, I give uh, the manuscript uh, to editors. And uh, it's more like a, a giving the baby to someone else. <laughs> the, you cut whatever you, 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 you feel like, don't let me know, don't let me know. <laughs> then uh, uh, then they, they will cut, uh, they, they will make it published. I know you have a new book coming up in July. Yes, yes. Tell me a little about the book. Okay, the, the, the English name called No Woman No Cry. Mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, I, I got it from a, a title of a, a famous painting, also mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bob Marley. Oh yes, I, I love had, that had, song. Has some of that. Uh, it's talking about uh, one, uh, you know Tsinghua University is more like MIT of China. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, one, uh, Tsinghua University graduate, double E major. Uh, he was in US uh, for PhD education for a couple of years. Uh, met his wife uh, in US, got married, uh, being an employee of a small company for a while. Then uh, feel bored, got the opportunity to, to uh, go back to China, uh, open his own company, his own biotech company, and uh, 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 in the process, uh, met another lady uh, Then he fell in love with. Uh, it's more talking about uh, uh, this gentleman, uh, the Mr. Tian, and his two ladies. And that's the triangle relationship. Sounds very cliche, <laughs> but it's more like uh, I, dig, I, I dig, dig uh, pretty, extremely deep into uh, the dynamics, into uh, the, uh, the concern, the fear uh, of this ray. Is there a message that you would like to send out to people who may look up to you and who want to achieve some of the things that you have achieved? I guess two things. One is uh, have your own aspiration. You, you should dare to dream. Uh, second, you should be persistent. See, if, if, if you only write one novel, uh, even though you are extremely talented, uh, one novel cannot carry you uh, a long way. Uh, if you write five, write ten, you become master.